Hi, I'm delighted, and today I'm going to be doing a post-match commentary with Like the Groundhog. I hope you enjoy. So as a first position, what do you think about this board right here? Well, there's a lot of wheat. Uh, probably want to get one next to this ore because the ore is hard to get. And uh, I like the 5, 9, 10 versus the 4, 8, 10 just because you get the better sheep and you don't need as much wood given uh, you're going to be going probably dev cards. So I had a very similar thought process, but my thought process was to find out what's the eighth spot on this board. When I say eighth spot, I mean the last spot. And I sort of like quickly planned it out, or at least thought, it gave a generalization of what I thought it was. And I thought the 843 would probably be taken, 6411 would probably be taken, 6511 would probably be taken. It's a 5910, there's a 4810, and there's a 693. Uh, and those are seven spots. Or, well, that's, those are, I think, there's like six spots right there. And I thought that the seventh or eighth spot was either going to be the 4911 or the 510. That made it really interesting because I had to think which spot uh, do I pick goes best with the 510 and the 4911 since I think that one of those two are going to be open. So at first I like the 693 since the 510 is uh, surprisingly strong to go with the 693 uh, along with the 4810 and the 5910 in general. But why I thought the 5910 was better over the 4810 was because... The 5910 gets you more consistency uh, paired with the uh, 4911, if in case you do get that. Uh, because you get the coordinated roads and you still have 3 1 ports compared to just the 4810. You also have the option to steal the 4810 player's 3 1 port. You'll guarantee get the other one, so it might be an interesting play to cut them off of the port there if they, if they didn't have another one. But they obviously have two spots, so who knows where their second will be. Yeah, I agree, since, uh, and this, the reverse can happen to you, too. If you lose your 3-1 port, uh, you, st you still have the 9-wood 3-1 port open, too. And the cute thing about the 5-9-10 is that you still have the coordinated 10s, and you also have coordinated uh, or sheep, which is nice for development cards. I think that's why I chose the 5-9-10, and of course I point towards the coast, which makes sense, I think. I also like the player 2 probably going to take 4-8-10, and then they can't block your 10 or so acting right after you, they're not going to punish you very hard. I agree, I agree. Since the the ore is like the critical resource that you need, depending what your second settlement is. So you're saying so, as the second position, you choose the 4810? I like the 4810. Yeah, I, I think so too. Uh, although the 4810 is very similar to the 5810, you have the advantage over first position, me, because you get to dictate whether you get the 510 or you get the 9411. And while uh, first position doesn't do that, First position is uh, held hostage to second position, uh, uh, choosing the 4911 or the 510. One thing that sucks is if player two gets the same resource combo you get, they're going to get a seventh spot that's better than the eighth spot. So that is one downside. So like you ideally want the first spot to be significantly better than the second spot or to block it. Like if you took four or five ten, but I don't think that'd be worth the risk. Yes. But now because they got second they'll probably have the better choice between whatever remaining wheat wheat ore, you know, so like that left area is going to be, they're going to have their pick of whatever's best for them. Yeah, uh, I agree. Uh, I'm not sure if I like third position's uh, pick on the 5, 6, 11. I think it can go well, but you're sort of stuck with something like the 5, 10, and you're forced to play or wheat sheep, which isn't that bad. You could do the 5, 6, 11 with the confidence of getting the 5, 10. Actually, uh, screw, screw what I said. Never mind. I think the 5.6.11 is actually pretty good if with the intention to go in the 5.10, actually. Yeah, I think one thing that's a problem is, like, they could get trapped in the middle there. So, you know, that weak port would look really good in this game, and I don't think they're going to get it now because somebody could just take a free road right there. Yeah, I, I agree. They're, they're just free road to the wheat port, especially on the 6 wheat. But I think that they, they can avoid getting trapped in the middle if, if they go in the 5.10, 3.1, since they still have this uh, 5 ore open right here. Yeah, that's true. Not great expansion. Not great expansion with no roads and easily somebody right below them has potentially wood brick. Well, no, I think that it's uh, too far away since where people are probably going to place. Maybe 692 or 693, but I think you will have at least one settlement on the 5 or right here. Some people have been prioritizing getting to those cutoff spots quicker and finding success. I mean, some of our friends that play do that. And it seems like uh, <laughs> those or wheat sheep people start to panic. Yeah, yeah. And it's kind of... I think the, the trick to kill or wheat sheep players is to cut them off and take away their settlement spots. So Red's gambling here that the middle 4911 will be open given uh, if you look at the way that the placements went, players 1 and 2 need wheat. 
And so it's unlikely for orange to go 4911. So that, that 4911 could be open if either you or purple decide to not take wheat, which doesn't seem likely, but uh, it is possible. So they decide to play us on the 834. I think that this is a pretty risky setup. I think if with the 834, you have to point towards the 300 port since you have so much wheat. People love the free road spot. Sometimes it's uh, yeah, not worth it. Oh, yeah, that looks like a mistake. What do you think? I feel like that uh, when you point your road to the left like that, you're pointing towards more wheat. But when you have 10 points of wheat, it's sort of just, uh, it's a resource that clogs your hand a lot. So they're going to be sitting with a lot of wheat in their hand a lot, and they won't be able to do much with it. But since we already know that information, it's going to be useful for us uh, deciding our picks later. Yeah, and they don't point to a port, which now it looks like they're, they could not get one. Someone can start on the 510, and then suddenly they're, only going for the sheep port or having to go all the way back to that 3-1. Yeah, it's a cut back, especially with only three brick and four wood. The road bidding is not very good. They'll be they'll probably be desperate to trade wheat away. So that could come to your come to your advantage. So you can consider not taking as much wheat, knowing they have to trade. What's well, interesting, I think the only saving grace for Orange is the fact that they do have this wheat port open, but the issue with trying to get to the wheat port is the fact that, well, red, they have a free road of their own. So they have to try to get a free road before red uh, because they if they commit their road, they just get instantly cut off. But if orange could get there, it's, it would be amazing. Here's something funny. Who do you, who would you rather have the wheat port? Uh, red, right? Yeah, probably red so he can get the trades with orange. <laughs> well, if you take 4911, then suddenly red has to put their road to the wheat port. And so that kind of screws both of them. That's interesting. Yeah, I agree. So uh, purple decides its place in the 510, which I think is a better choice compared to 4911. I think I have to take the 4911 uh, compared with the 810. Even though we say no wheat equals defeat a lot, or at least I do, I think the situation, it doesn't apply right here. Knowing that orange is going to have a bunch of wheat in their hand and not have very much else to do with it. Yeah, I think if you really say, okay, I'm going to trade orange wheat get those early wheats, you can commit to this. It's really risky because you don't get dev cards early. And, but the one good thing is purple's not going to block your 10. They're not going to block your four. Um, so yeah, and you can block purples five and 10. But you do have, you will have to trade for wheats for sure. And hopefully hopefully orange orange will just have a log jam of wheat in their hands, so they should. You could make the argument of just stealing from orange also, but I'm not sure that I'm too keen on that idea, especially since when you steal from them, it also makes them less uh, likely to trade with you. But also is the fact that I don't think uh, Orange can do much in this game. So they, I don't think they have a super high chance of winning. Right. So I don't want to be uh, hurting them at all. I'd rather just like building up a nice trade relationship and just supplying each other. Since I'm on high ore, but no wheat, and Orange is on high wheat, but no ore. So naturally, we should be good trading buddies. I like that. They got coordinated nine roads too. You can always put those down together. People won't be able to steal them as much from you. Yeah. So what's also interesting, a 10 just hit and uh, purple right here, they start on the 510. So that means they have two or two wheat. If they're keeping track of cards. They should take from me and get the early city. And they do. And they also get the ore. So it's an early city for purple. And that's pretty massive. It's a really, really massive increase in production. They're definitely ahead in the lead now. Since they have a very strong orbit sheep set up. And they started on that 3 1 port, which which is always scary because they can easily get get that first road down now. And, and it's not like they're, they're struggling to for settlement spots. Ooh. Yeah, that road by Orange is not good at all since if he's just looking at what Red has in hand, it's a free road also. So it's just going to 100% get cut off. There's no way that Red is not going to commit to the wheat port, yeah. especially since I took the 4 and 11. So that was a pretty big blunder by Orange. Which is great for you. Great for you. Now they have plenty of wheat to stuck in their hand. No 3 1 port. You can trade. You can start trading wheats right away. Get them while you can. I totally agree. In fact, you know, or for wheat is often like, feels the wheat player feels like they're getting the better end. But in this case, their cities, if they city up their spots, it doesn't help them that much compared to you. It'll help you get more roads. They just get more wheat and they have to keep trading it. I agree. I'm trying to get the trades for the wheat right now, but... With only three cards, though. Yeah, with only three cards, though. Uh, although this doesn't necessarily complete a set for me, I'm just trying to get the early wheats while I can. Usually, I'd say you want a trade to complete a set. In this case, it's fine to early, get the trades early. Yeah, and you know those wheats are going to accumulate. There are going to be so many. They're going to have... I mean, they don't even have that many roads, so they're literally going to have like hands like that are four or five wheat, one sheep, one wood. They're going to have to be thinking of what to do with that. 
Yeah. So we're almost like forced trade buddies since I can't do anything with that wheat and he can't do anything with his setup. So we're gonna we're really relying on each other to do stuff. Yeah, it keeps you both in the game, and I think it keeps. I think you are the beneficiary more than Orange, just because Orange can't really, unless they can get Army. I mean, they could get Army and Road, but they just have to really like trade a lot and and get lucky dev cards, just because they have no port and yeah. You know, I, I think keeping up keeping up is going to be tough. So purple does a three for one, and they get the early dev card. And this is uh, pretty scary to yep. me. Uh, purple starting to buy early dev cards, especially since they're really hard to block. They have two ore spots, and uh, it doesn't feel super good just blocking the ten wheat by itself. And they still have the eight wood just for port fuel, just for whatever they want. And it also can't block the four sheep since I'm on it myself. So yeah, it's interesting to think about how you can finesse the trades with orange to make it. Like, you know, you really want to get at cities when you make those trades. So I feel like if you can time it perfectly where, let's say your hand like this, you have four sheep. That's one wheat. So all you need is one wheat and an ore. So if you roll an ore, like two ores, let's say, you can, you can even trade an ore and a brick for two wheat, things like that, just to get your city. Because those seem like fair trades. And I think they are. But like I said, the benefit is more towards you. There you go. Yeah. And you're one weed away, which you don't have an easy way to get without a trade. You can't work for one another resource. You know, it's going to be very hard to like accumulate. And if you just four for one now, you risk losing these cards. So this spot here, here is like a key trade. Brick is a, oh, so that hurts. Yeah, that, that seven hurts since uh, if the seven didn't roll this turn, I would be trying to trade the brick for a wheat and getting my city on this turn. But since I roll a seven, I have to pass. I decided to dump the four sheep uh, and keep the one brick because I can actually still get a uh, trade with orange. Uh, since whatever I steal from purple, I can trade doing a two for two, offering my brick and whatever card I get from purple and trade uh, for two wheat with orange since they're starting to accumulate more and more wheats in their hand. Also to note that a four did roll. Uh, since the four did roll, the brick is the complementary resource, so they're going to be really wanting the brick. And brick is usually a good, a good trade card early in the game. Yeah. So although uh, I'm initially offering this trade, it looks sort of greedy, offering a two for one, and this gives me a city. Uh, I plan on Orange saying no to that trade and then compromising by giving him the brick and sheep to make it to make him feel better. It's just like, all right, I'll compromise and give you like a much better deal. Since the first one, I, I know myself it's just, that it feels like a scam. Everybody has a different style with these. Like Some people go really greedy first, and then they come down, they come down. And I feel like I don't, I don't do it that way. But I, I like, you get used to people's patterns, like, you can just say, I reject the first one, they'll come down, they'll take the second one. Or, people sometimes do the reverse, where they offer one, and they start offering more. And you just wait it out. <laughs> you just have to figure out, everybody's different. It's definitely, like, a personality thing. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I agree. My personality, I tend to go for, like, the same amount of cards in a trade, but I feel like the cards matter more to me like in this situation give two for two and like the brick is not that critical to you you're going to get plenty of brick and for them yeah it's not it's not even that critical but the wheat is the key resource and so yeah, yeah. obviously trying to get it is so eventually uh, going to happen i think eventually so i don't get the trade so i just pass uh and there's another wheat on this board and that's from the six uh, I think that I'm pretty fine with passing right here, especially I don't really care about the brick since I have the coordinated nines, so it's just like an extra random card. Yeah, so it's just an extra random card. It's a trading card since I have the coordinated nines. This is another problem is that other people trading the wheat before you get to it, like orange trading purple here, like orange is thinking about it. That Hopefully they recognize purple as a, too dangerous to do that with, but, you know, they're so desperate. They're going to be so desperate to get rid of that wheat that you have to watch out for... Uh, other people get giving like to get your greedy uh, two for one trades is going to be harder. If somebody else is going to take one for one. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> so another five is rolled on or on orange's turn, and that's more sheep. Here we go. So uh, they're probably going to be more desperate to trade since there are eight cards. So oh, they decided just to buy dev card. I'm sort of saddened by this since they uh, I wanted to trade them for their wheats. But that's okay. And I think the reason why Orange didn't do the trade on my turn was because they only had one wheat to trade, not two. Yeah, now you got to find your way to get a sheep and a wheat. I would say that's the best chance you got. I agree. 
Uh, also, another four world, so my brick's even more valuable since they have two woods in hand now. All right, there's one. Yeah, this is. And yeah. I decided to, I said to say no to that deal since I want to try to get the compound deal. Yeah, this seems like a fair deal here. Yeah, I'm not sure if Orange does have the two wheats in hand though, since uh, that's why I didn't do the trade last turn. So, uh, but instead, I know that a five did roll, so I know that they do have sheep, since their hand should be one wheat. Uh, it's one wheat, two woods, a sheep, and something else that I wasn't paying attention to. And this is great. These are rare cards for orange. Those are orange brick. There's only three hexes. So you, if you think about it, you're like, well, I'm getting, I have plenty of wheat sheep. I'm getting a good deal. And the thing is, it's more valuable to you because you, the resources you lack, you know, like are huge for you. Like it, should they trade you? Like it's, it's debatable, but I feel like it's good enough for orange to say, to take their chances, you know, like, all right, I'll give you wheat because you give me resources I'm having trouble getting, so. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not a particularly unbalanced trade, even though he does give me a city on my turn. But uh, since I do give him the cards he does need on his turn. And this is interesting, which one you want a city? Why, what, what are you thinking about here? I, I think the 5, 9, 10, since purple themselves, right. they can't block the 10 ore. And I just like the extra production, and, uh, and the 9 wood doesn't get blocked itself uh, very much either. Also, I like sitting up the extra ore because uh, that's the trade resource one more time for orange. Since uh, I want to produce more ore so I can give it away to orange so I can get the wheats. Since it's essentially like a, it, it's weird, but my ore is almost a wheat hex since I'm expecting these trades from orange. Yeah, I like when you have like a setup that can really, like let's say you get two cities and you have coordinated nine roads. You can really spam the roads later. You don't have to look like a, a big threat. Like take road as the last two points often that's like the way that you stay out of getting people blocking you and uh i don't think anyone else is suited to get really a super long road here yeah uh, it's real interesting but the road player right now red is they're split across the island so it's going to be uh so it's going to be annoying for them to commit on both sides yep. but right now it doesn't really make the make sense for them to commit down there uh or commit on the 693 since there's not too many appealing spots for them so purple builds the road, and the year plenty for two wheats. I think that's a city since the ten did hit, and the five also hit. Oh, yeah. So that's their city on the five ten. So now they're really becoming scary. I think what purple should do to really lock up this game is to hold off and keep buying dev cards to not only protect themselves but to lock your largest army win condition. As orange's turn, and he rolls a seven. What's really nice about uh, people rolling seven. Uh, What's really nice about people rolling seven on their turn when you have zero cards is that uh, let's say you're like really, really far ahead in the lead and there's a critical resource that you need. Let's say like an eight wheat. They're not going to only block you if you're, if, uh, if you're on the eight wheat by yourself because you have zero cards. So, and this, but instead they'd rather block the shared spot, which is way more appealing since they still do get the card. So orange decides to block the nine brick and take from red. I don't think this is the best move. I think they should be taking from purple. But they do play a knight card and they put it back on the 10 wheat, which I think is good since purple has a very, very strong lead at the moment. Maybe they're looking for a specific card here, which could come to your advantage. Yeah. Put a road down to at least uh, have somewhere to build. So they decided to buy a dev card. So they did that in the wrong order. Yeah. Because, you know, you want to buy the dev card first in case you get a road building, especially when you're only on 3-4 wood brick. Like, you kind of need those wood brick cards. Yep. Also, what's uh, really interesting to note that uh, Orange's key missing resource for that settlement was the brick. So once they get that other nine, they'll have I can trade it away for more wheats with Orange since they need that brick to build the settlement on the eight ten. And I'm really happy that they're actually building on the eight ten because all it is is just more wheat to clog Orange's hand. And since it's clogging Orange's hand, it's just more resources for me to trade. Ooh, they got the brick though. Yeah, so they they got the brick, and that should be their settlement. It's still good because it's not a port spot, so it doesn't. It still it actually makes their wheat even more clogged. They're gonna add six to eight points of wheat with this settlement. Yep, I agree. And you just rolled ore, so here you go, perfect. I would even do two ore for two wheat right now, just to set it set yourself up. Yeah, for a city. Oh, so they they still have a dev card. They didn't play it because they're blocked. I mean, they're blocked now, so maybe they would either move it. Well, as orange, I don't uh, feel like there's no reason to play a night card in this situation. Uh, you have still 
the six and the eight wheat and this 10 wheat is way more critical for purple than it is for orange all right so good they're getting a bunch of wheat and they yeah, do so, have the ore yeah. they need so hopefully so you get some more ores so king high offering bricks uh, since no. the 11 hit a few times you know they're wanting they're wanting my ores and because the six did hit also, I think they're trying to get the city. Yeah, I don't think that would be good for you if they get a city. Especially since I plan to take road eventually. You know, these these uh, when people don't have ore and they're like close to a city, let's say he's like one ore away. If they panic, let's say, and they or they at least they give up, it sets them back a lot. Like if they buy, let's say they buy knights, but they don't end up with army, they wasted those, you know, that chance to get a city that. That like their 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 big hurdle is the city, so yeah. I think if they give up on it here, like right now, if he if he uh, doesn't isn't able to get the city and settles for dev cards, I think that would be a mistake unless they can really sustain those dev cards. But it seems hard in this game. I agree. So Red's really looking for a trade and the offer a four for two trade. Wow! Uh, I take this trade instantly because. It's a four for two trade, and since they only have six cards, I know that they can't get a city. And someone else will take it too. Go. Oh. Yeah, and purple, and he decides to trade with purple and not me, and then passes. What the? What type of trade is this? I, I think if you're gonna do a four for two trade, you have to complete a set. And yeah, red just literally just passed with doing nothing, and they're trading with purple, and they have like the super super strong orbit sheep setup. I don't agree with that at all. Like, I mean, I guess red counts counting on that no one's going to steal from them and they have time, but it just gives too much to purple, I think. I agree. It gives a, a lot to purple. The Maybe the saving grace for that trade is that it brings uh, purple over seven cards, so they can still get seven out on their turn with the odds at low. So here's a two for two that uh, you were talking about. Yeah. Uh, looking, for, looking to do it with orange, since I know that their hand is filled with wheats. They're also, uh, the 11 did hit for them, so uh, giving them the 2 or would uh, try to get them closer to their city. What do they want? Ooh, too greedy. Yeah, they want a 2 for 1. Um, there's no way I'm going to do that. Not yet, at least. I'd rather just do it on their turn, hopefully hope for a better deal. Now you have another brick to possibly trade. Yeah, it's, it's tempting to use it as a road, but it's also a brick to trade, and it's really important since... Uh, the, these cards are my ticket to another city. Yeah, trading for wheat is a lot. If you're going for cities, trading for wheat is easier than trading for ores because there's more wheat and people are more reluctant to give ores. And you only need two wheat. And the thing is, like, you could play a while trading for wheats, building things that need wheat. And it just seems like you can plan for it. Like, this is the perfect situation for it. I agree. Oh, hopefully, okay, so they don't move the knight. They don't move it again. So that means they might have a non-knight. But potentially, yes. Oh, and they rolled an ore, so that's bad. Because now they, if they have, like, year plenty or they steal, ah, okay. Yeah, so they're probably going to get their own city soon. Wow. So that sucks. They took away that trade that you would have for sure gotten here. Oh, what'd they get? They got the brick and the ore. Since they needed, the, the they have two ores right now, so they just got the ore, uh, the third ore with their... Uh, with the year of plenty, so they're gonna do road, uh, road and city. I think I would have taken just ores there. Why do you need the? I... Yes, I agree. I agree. I'm just taking that, take the extra ore since it sets you up for another city if another eleven hits. Oh. Well, you have the ore, so this is not that bad because purple would be affected slightly more than you. Yes. I think purple now is yeah really starting to run away with the game, especially once they have, uh, especially looking at their setup right now. They have the two two wheat spots. They have eight wood for it's a free card since they have a three one port, and we share the sheep, so I can't really block that. And they have two ore spots. They're really uh, starting to run away with the game. All right. Well, the good the good thing is here is purple doesn't have the cards to trade. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> and I know that uh, red's going to be starting to get really desperate for the city. Oh. See, he gave up. He gave up on the city. He, look, yeah. he he held last time, and then he didn't get closer, so he gave up. So yeah, like I, I don't think that was a really good trade by Red at all last turn at all. Since you've you a four for two trade just to buy one dev card is not a fabulous play. So here's a critical spot. Now you have you have 
the chance to get another city. I don't think the roads are that valuable yet. I think you'd yeah. rather get to the city. There you go. I, I, I think that this is one trade by Orange Wood uh, that I disagree with. It's you. It's a one for one, but it gives me a city, but doesn't uh, do Orange anything since they only have one card. Although I like it makes that, sense since the brick is rare. Yeah, I like that you did one for one, even though it seems like they only had one card. But it seems like people try to get more there. But you needed the one wheat. You need, you don't produce it. Like now you have two cities. You don't even need wheat for a while now, because you're just going to be getting so many cards. I agree. I have all the sheep just so I can four for one, and I have the coordinated double roads now, which is quite strong. And I have the ores just for me to trade away or keep for uh, more development cards. So I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with the six rolling since that's, uh, that's more wheat in circulation that I can trade with for orange. So I think it's good for you if red or orange gets army because you are probably going to get a late game long road and if they take the army points away from purple who has no knights that's going to delay them a lot because eventually they can try to overtake but um, yeah oh man and he gives purple two bricks oh but they bought so, a dev card they bought a dev card though uh, uh, so but they didn't get a knight though so that's a road booting well they could they, they might still get a knight uh from the one they just bought and I think it's actually, I would usually disagree with trading the leader uh, being purple right now. But I think it's almost fine since you're giving them, uh, you're giving them bricks. But it's not like uh, development card material for them to defend themselves. But I still don't like the trade that much. So now red with coordinated nine wood brick as well, except they only have a settlement view of the city. Yeah. And it's interesting to note that... Uh, Red is starting to get farther and farther for red. So depending on what they get, they might uh, switch the win condition. They they might just uh, they might just go full out on reds and just not compete for army at all. I think I'm gonna I think blocking the ten wheat right here makes a lot of sense since I want to keep on shutting down purple from buying development cards. Even though I do uh, cut a little pretty, even though I do cut a little bit of production from orange, I. I'd rather it's this block is more for hurting purple. So yeah, this road, which direction? I think you could almost uh, hold the road right here and and hold it to trade with orange. But let's see what I do. All right, I just drop it instead. I think uh, it would make sense to hold the road and anticipate a trade with orange, since since their hand is once again filled with wheats, and I know that they're just trying to get to the sheep port. The sheep port is honestly like pretty harmless, so I would. So you could say that you could hold the road right there and just trade with orange instead. Well, anticipating a trade with orange. So yeah, you always worry about other people having the ability to trade with orange now. So hopefully, they don't have what orange needs coming up here. So I think that play by uh, purple right there is actually maybe a mistake. I probably would have started buying development cards since you have to start running towards your win condition. There's your double nine. Yeah, they need to, they need to start buying. So yeah, they're looking for. Uh, so I know they were looking for roads again. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be trying to trade a, a road for wheats, and so I know the fours and threes haven't hit in a while. So they don't have any red material. So might as well complete the set for them by giving them a red and get wheats. Since the eights, hit, eights and sixes did hit, so their hand is like for sure clogged with wheats. Looks like a good deal for them. Like you, you roll, you roll one road for you, one for them, or at least one piece of the settlement for you, one for them. Yep, they take it. See, these are good yeah. deals. It does favor us a little bit more than compared to orange, but it's a, an orange aside, it does still look like a good deal since... Hey, it's another road. It helps me. And this this wheat doesn't necessarily complete me a set, so it's theoretically a pretty harmless trade at the moment. Yeah, they only they didn't even have the spot yet, so they just put another road down. And I think yeah, it does help them, but I think you're not really worried since they're. I mean, I think that they have a harder road to the final ten points. So I think you just kind of monitor it and keep trading with the people that uh you feel like you're st you're still getting the long term. There you go, sheep. Ooh, you almost have two things here. Yeah. Well, you do have them now. Yeah, I have the settlement and dev, dev, uh, dev card on my turn. I was thinking if a nine rolled, you cut off red over there. He's coming in your area now. Yeah, for sure. I think it's uh, almost 
threatening since they're at six points, uh, but they have that one development card. I wouldn't be too surprised if that's a knight card. Mm. Or if that's a victory point. So they could easily be at seven. Uh, and they have the hurdle of trying to get the city, though. So we have to monitor how many ores they have in hand so and try to prevent them from getting a city but just by stealing from them. So on this turn, uh, well, on this turn, what would you do? Yeah, I mean, the thing is sometimes, like, here, before you build a settlement, you could make a trade because people are more likely to trade you if you, like, haven't done anything, I think. Like, if you start looking scarier, they'll be less likely. So, like, do you want any trade here? Because you have... You have the settlement, and then you'll have three, one, one. So you'd have a dev card. Yeah. Um, so well, you buy the I dev ended up, card. Yeah, I ended up not doing the trade, just deciding to just go with the just going with the settlement and or dev card settlement. Yeah, like if you could get a sheep for a wheat, let's say you just hold another wheat for later. It is it is something to consider before it becomes too scary to trade you. You know, like you don't look the scariest yet. You're five, and they got six, so. I think orange would still trade you. I agree. I still think purple is, uh, has a strong grip on the game. They just need to really start buying dev cards. So the 11 is rolled, and that's ores for me and orange. So let's see what they do with this, since they have nine cards. It's a big roll for orange. I would take that. Yeah, I would take it. Even though it does uh, help orange complete a set, uh, most likely, at least. Uh, yeah, I'm probably completing them a settlement. I just think the the wheats are just too rare for me, and I need it. And I think that what Orange is doing is pretty harmless. I think they have a, they're very far away from winning still. So even though that's a classic example of wow, well, like, uh, giving your opponent a set uh, while you don't get much in return, I think me getting the wheats is a lot since. Well, what's Orange's path to victory? It's pretty difficult for them. Uh, I'm going to be buying, or at least trying to buy a lot of night cards, and Red is going to be extending the roads a lot, so I think Orange is not too scary, which is why I'm, I'm okay with making that trade. Yeah, and you can go either direction still. Like I feel like you can end up with Army or Road, depending on how this goes. You kind of have to see what happens here. Yeah. Although, uh, back on that trade, though, I think I probably could have... Uh, I would have been able to demand more from Orange. Since they had nine cards and all they all I knew they were gonna do was just build a settlement. So it could have easily demanded more. Nine would be fine here. Yeah, that would be great since it gives me two more rounds. I love having get... two and two, because then you get Ooh. Yeah. Oh, right, so now so... this is a critical. What do you you can almost do two things, like this is So what would you do here right right now? Because you have a knight, you have road settlement and that would leave you with two ores but you if you stole a card you could get a wheat or a sheep so it's almost like it's almost like what could you turn an ore into but let's see what is the knight situation one red has one down dev card i think i'd put this hmm interesting yeah it's tricky because like you could get army still because now you could play one by one yeah i, I think it's vera army is easily in my grasp I play an aggressive knight right here, but I don't think this is the correct. Well, it's a. I'm I'm still not sure about this play since I was playing to pluck from, uh, from purple right here. But I thought that I had some critical spots I wanted to defend too, like my wood brick or or. But the reasoning to do this uh, steal right here is to to try to get the card from purple, which is most likely a sheep. Uh, there's sheep and wood. Uh, and hopefully hoping to trade that ore for a wheat so I can do um, settlement dev card. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's like that would be, would be a pretty good sequence there. I, I guess agree, you, could also, would... you could also do road. Uh, you could dev card and road only. No one's at your spot yet. Yeah. I, I think that uh, the sequence would be okay, but the issue is that like it's a low. there's a low chance that it actually succeeds since... I'm dependent on orange giving me a trade, and I'm depending on stealing the sheep from purple, which are both, uh, the sheep was, I think, it wasn't a super high chance I got it. So I bought the dev card, and I'm just gonna... Alright, so you got the dev card. You got the knight, that's good. So yeah, I'm just gonna pass. So that's great. So now you have the knight lead. No matter what, you have the lead, as long as you can 
keep getting them. Oh, there's a bunch of weed. So Purple nah, finally now just starts to buy dev cards. So they buy two. And it's sort of annoying since they have positioning on me, since they can just uh, immediately move it, especially when I block the 10 wheat. Oh, more, more roads. Here we go. So yeah, so, this, this nine is quite critical. So, okay. And another nine rolls. All right. Yeah, see, so like, this are, look at these roads. Like, you can totally get your last two points with roads. Of course. I think uh, it's, it's very, very easy to do road and settlement. Or, sorry, I think it's very easy to get uh, largest army and longest road in this game. But it's also critical to note that King High, when he built on the nine, he's also he has also coordinated roads. Uh, and right, right now, since I know he's at seven points with longest road, his only option now is to get a city. So he's stuck. He's, so he's stuck trying to get the city. And I'm also suspecting that dev card is a victory point. So I think he's at eight points right now. One thing he should think about is to like. He has a window to win, but he knows you just rolled. He should know you just rolled a ton of roads. And, yeah, and so did he. S and you're so, gonna make him force. You're gonna force him to spend his resources that he would need to city on roads. Yeah, so he has a decision to make to either play the roads and lose the city, uh, or to port the road material for the city, but then risk me taking longest road. So let's see what he decides to do. So he starts porting uh, three. He ported three roads for two ores. And he does another three for one for an ore. So now I know that his hand is three ores and two other extra cards. And I roll a five on my turn. So before I do anything, uh, probably going to look for a trade with orange. And I remember what happens this turn. I think King High made a mistake because that he should know that you're about to build all these roads. And he's not going to be able to have road anymore. Exactly. I agree. Six roads is not enough. I mean, I guess you could seven out. I guess you could seven out. That was the only thing you could think, maybe. If you seven out, then you are forced to dump something. Yeah, so I'm trying to get a wheat from orange right here. Uh, I know that I can't trade the sheep since the five just rolled and orange has sheep. So I'm trying to get a wheat since it'll make my sequencing... Uh, well, because I need wheat for everything. This uh, bypasses a three for one, which I really like. The orange says yes to this one for one. And I don't think this is a good deal from Orange, especially when I'm at 17 cards. So you're in last. That you're in last. So maybe that factored in because you're at five. They have seven, six. With that dev cards down. Yeah. So I tried doing another trade with Orange just to see how much I can uh, get away with, but he decides to do now. Uh, so this is a really interesting turn, viewers. Uh, I'd like for you to pause and uh, figure out what you would do on this turn. It's really, really interesting. So I'm trying to calculate what I can do in my turn. And there's two facts that I realize is that if I buy a knight card right here, uh, that means I can play a knight card, and that means I have largest army by my next turn. I also do have a settlement in my hand. And since I do have a settlement in my hand, it lets me, uh, it gives me to six points. And what do you know is that largest army is two points, longest road is two points, and I have a lot of roads in hand. So if I do... Uh, so if I do road settlement to the 10-3, uh, which is better than the 10-11 since it gives me wheat, it gets me the triple shared wheat, and it gets me the coordinated 10s, uh, I still have enough material left to connect. And not only that, uh, I need to take from King High because remember he has three out of five, he's, his three out of his five cards are ores, and that allows me to get enough resources to, to three for one for a development card. So yeah. Uh, so I play the, I get the knight, and I, so I get the ore from King High, and I get the knight. So, to get a knight is a perfect play here. <laughs> and he dumped all his roads, so now he can't overtake. Yes, and he dumps all his roads. I think the only way for him to, the only like, saving grace for him is, like, a bunch of fours and elevens. The nines can't even roll for him because uh, I have better road production than he does. Uh, another way maybe like to extend the game is that uh, he has a monopoly in hand. Or if orange connects roads somehow. Yeah, if, or if orange uh, connects their roads. But the 4s and 11s haven't been hitting. Or the 4 and 3s haven't been hitting. Maybe purple made a mistake blocking red here. Because red could have taken back road. Yeah, the thing is, even though purple wants to block me, it, 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 you're blocking red, and you need red to take longest road right now. So it's 
Yeah, and then the nine rolls, and that sort of hurts uh, King High. If anything, I think uh, Purple should have maybe considered blocking the nine brick instead, since when the nine does hit, I still do get better brick uh, compared to Red, and you need Red to take largest, or, and you need Red to take longest road. And also, I like to make a note that I think I screwed up a little bit on the sequencing on my turn. Should have stole from Red first and then bought the Knight card. Uh, just make sure it was a Knight. But with that being said, very nice. I uh, I play my Knight, and that's ten points. So what do you think we did good on that game, and what do you think could have been improved? I think the trades were the key to the game, those wheat trades. I agree. Recognizing that situation that this is a game where you can easily go wheatless because someone has a lot of uh, wheat clogged up in their hand. I think the saying, no wheat equals defeat, uh, only applies when you don't have good trade options, or you don't have or you don't have a good way to get wheat. But in this case, since I'm even though I'm starting with that wheat, I know Orange can just feed me a bunch since their hand is going to be just clogged. Yeah, I mean, they, like, I think they didn't even make bad deals, except they just, if they, because what are they going to do? If they don't city, then they have no chance. At least they have a chance here, but you're just calculating that your chance is going to be better. And they only had, they finished with six, and, you know, they, they gave them quite a few good deals, so tough to win, um, even though the trades are, like, things that I feel like if they didn't get, they would do worse. All right, do you have any closing thoughts you'd like to say? No, I mean, I, I, I don't like starting without wheat because it is hard to do anything. And, you know, sometimes people won't trade. But, like, in this situation, because I think a lot of people would take the 810, just take the safe dev card plan. But it really uh, it really was a situation where Orange was just going to have too much wheat. And I think uh, the way that you sequenced it with this, you didn't even build a road before you got, I think you had two cities before you had a road. And those made that made you look more uh, uh, less threatening so you can get those trades and a lot of the trades were like one weed and one of your cards for a four for one and it was like a little bit more subtle uh, and then once you had the double cities you knew those nines would be deadly and you know help you do everything else which they did uh, and I think that that let you I like when, when you're behind at five points and then suddenly you skyrocket to like eight and then you get a night like there's nothing anybody could have done except seeing what you were planning, I guess, with your, the way you were building, you know? Yes, yes. I think uh, potentially to play around that, King Howe would have to make the difficult choice uh, red. They'd have to make the difficult choice to uh, extend their road and to not port for their, for their materials since, you know, I have a better road income than, than they do on the nines. So even if they do port for their city, they're going to lose longest road the next turn. Yeah, I mean, I think one thing they could have done, which I don't know if this is going to ever happen, but, like, you could convince, uh, let's say you take two of your roads and you say, purple, uh, put put those two roads between green so they can't connect. Like, that would have that would have made it so that they don't have to extend as long. But uh, would purple do it? I don't know. Yeah, I, it's, I think it would be really tough for purple to do that uh, since they have no brick. But you could easily, easily collude that just by, uh, just by red giving them the two bricks to do so and, like, breaking up the connect. Wait, one trick we figured out, if somebody has, if you're worried about people colluding to, to trade each other roads to overtake you, a thing we figured out you could do is you wait till somebody has, let's say they have eight points, and nobody can give them roads to overtake you because they would just win. So like they can't actually trade anybody road if someone has eight points. Or even if they had like six points with the third night, everybody should know, well, I guess you can't do that, you know, end game, like, let's just change who wins <laughs> road trade that everybody hates. Uh, so you could, you could kind of time it to like, and especially if they like build cities and they're waiting for the end to take road, like not going to happen if you can actually plan like around uh, that annoying move. I know some people don't like to go for road just because of that in like, you know, competitive games, people want to keep the game going. They just like trade five roads to somebody. Yeah. Especially it's almost like a forced trade. Uh, since you have to give up these, like, you have to give someone, like, five roads just to continue the game. Yeah. Uh, especially, and you see that a lot more in competitive play since anyone is willing to do anything to extend the game. Which is why a lot of people hate going road and the more competitive games because people just feed someone else the roads and you're so close to winning, but you have to keep doing a road battle while trying to get your 10th point, And that's really annoying. Yeah, and as long as they have down dev cards, they don't even have to be at eight. They could be at six. You could say, we don't know that they don't have two VPs. <laughs> yeah, that's that's very true. Yep. That's enough to talk people out of doing it, I think. Thank you so much for letting me commentate the game with you. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Anyways, I'm delighted. 
and I hope you learned something.